Now we're going to talk about the engine in your car. It's either a gasoline or diesel engine and basically uh, as you know all real processes are irreversible so we have an idealized version of this process it's called the Otto cycle. So this is the reversible uh, version which is going to give us theoretically maximum efficiency of these engines. Now this cycle consists of four steps. Uh, starting from point A, we have an adiabatic compression from V1 to V2. From point B to point C, we have an isovolumetric process. From point C to point D, we have an adiabatic expansion. And from D to A, another isovolumetric process. And as you can see, we are going in between two isotherms, uh, TA and TC here. So let me make it clear that uh, because the, this isotherm is higher, Tc is going to be my uh, hot uh, reservoir temperature and Ta is going to be my cold reservoir temperature. So I'm operating between these two temperature extremes and as a result I have a cyclic process and therefore this cyclic process is going to give me uh, the area uh, enclosed by the cycle will give me the work done uh, by the engine. So W engine, so that's what, that will be the output. And uh, because I'm going from uh, point P to point C is from a lower temperature isotherm to a higher temperature isotherm, that's when I'm absorbing heat, QH is uh, entering uh, the cycle. And uh, going from D to A, I'm going from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. Uh, TD and TA, if you compare them, they are at uh, different uh, isotherms and D is uh, at a higher temperature. So therefore, this is where I'm releasing heat uh, to the cold reservoir. So what I would like to do is to calculate the theoretical efficiency of this cycle. So let's start from uh, A to B here. So A to B I have uh, the adiabatic compression and therefore uh, for this process I can write uh, temperature at point A V1 to gamma minus 1 is equal to temperature at point B V2 to gamma minus 1 and this is where I have no heat input there is going to be a work uh, generated by this process from A to B now B to C is isovolumetric process and what do I know about isovolumetric processes? Uh, minus PDV, so the work done uh, minus PDV will be zero because the volume is not changing, but there will be heat uh, exchange, so it's going to be heat absorbed, QH. It's the number of moles of the gas that's going through this process molar specific heat at constant volume because it's isovolumetric times delta T. So what is delta T? N C V temperature at point C minus temperature at point B. Uh, this is the absolute value of QH. It is the amount of heat absorbed that is positive because I note that TC must be greater than TB because I'm going to a higher temperature isotherm. Now I go from uh, C to D. C to D is a diabetic expansion. And what do I have in a diabetic expansion? Temperature at point C, V2 to gamma minus 1 is temperature at point D, V1 to gamma minus 1 there is no heat absorbed, there will be some work 
which is going to be W, C to D. And then from D to A, I have another isovolumetric uh, process, which gives me work is zero. There is going to be a heat release, QC. It is N CV delta T. So that's the amount of heat released is what I'm calling QC, absolute value of QC. So I need absolute value of delta T. Now what is the positive delta T here? It is TD minus TA. So you're going to have TD greater than TA. Actually, from D to A, it's TA minus TD, which is why the heat absorbed is negative. Therefore, it is heat released. Okay, so what is the efficiency of this cycle? Efficiency is the useful uh, output work divided by the amount of heat that I'm providing to the engine. And because in a cyclic process, I have uh, no change in the internal energy, I'm back to the same temperature. Uh, therefore, I have the total uh, work done on the system plus the heat added to the system is zero. The work done on the system is minus W engine, the work output of the engines, because it's work done by the engine, plus the total heat added, QH minus QC. So I have W engine, the work output is equal to QH minus QC. Therefore, for the efficiency here, I have uh, QH minus QC divided by QH, which will give me 1 minus QC over QH. Okay, so I need uh, what Q absolute value of QH is, that's here. And then I need what absolute value of QC is, that's here. I need the relationship between the volumes and temperatures. There is one equation here and one equation from the other adiabatic process, compression, here. Okay, so let's use these results in order to calculate the efficiency. Okay, so once again, efficiency is 1 minus uh, QC over QH. It is 1 minus NCV TD minus TA divided by NCV uh, TC minus TB. So this will be 1 minus TD minus TA divided by TC minus TB. All right, so let me uh, copy here the relationship between uh, TD, uh, TA and TB and TC and TD. So TA V1 to gamma minus 1 is TB V2 to gamma minus 1. Uh, so I copy that here. I have... Uh, TA V1 to gamma minus 1 is equal to TB V2 to gamma minus 1. And then I have uh, at the same time TC V2 to gamma minus 1 is TD V1 to gamma minus 1. TC V2 to gamma minus 1 is TD v1 to gamma minus 1. All right. So uh, instead of uh, TA here, I can write uh, TA is equal to uh, TB times v2 over v1 to gamma minus 1. Um, then I will have, um, instead of TD here, I can write TC uh, 
v2 over v1 to gamma minus 1. So I, I can substitute these into the efficiency. It is 1 minus uh, Td is equal to Tc times v2 over v1 to gamma minus 1. And Ta is Tb times v2 over v1 to gamma minus 1 divided by Tc minus Tb. So I realize that this efficiency is 1 minus v2 over v1 to gamma minus 1 uh, Tc minus Tb divided by Tc minus Tb. So they will cancel. Therefore, the efficiency of this cycle, the Otto cycle, is 1 minus V2 over V1 to gamma minus 1. Or you can write it also this way, 1 minus 1 over V1 over V2 to gamma minus 1. That's the theoretical efficiency of the Otto cycle. Now, I have to give a word of caution here. Uh, this is uh, for a reversible engine. In a real engine, uh, due to friction, uh, incomplete uh, combustion, uh, etc., and the non-ideal processes, the efficiency is lower, lowered. So if you're calculating theoretically maximum efficiency you can obtain from such a cycle, uh, in uh, assuming that it is reversible, but in case, in fact, it is irreversible and the actual efficiency will be lower than this value that we have calculated. And the second uh, detail I would like to give you is that the difference between a diesel engine and um, the gasoline engine has to do with the efficiency of the combustion process. Uh, in, a, in the diesel engine, uh, it doesn't require any spark. Uh, to initiate the combustion, uh, temperature is high enough in the diesel engine uh, during compression stroke to ignite the air fuel mixture. So you don't need this uh, spark and that gives uh, some advantage in terms of the combustion process. The combustion process is more efficient, it's more complete and therefore the diesel engines tend to be more efficient than gasoline engines. But on the theoretical uh, side, theoretical point of view, we have the same thing going on in these uh, two engines, the Otto cycle. And the Otto cycle gives us uh, a maximum efficiency of 1 minus 1 over V1 over V2 to gamma minus 1.